Welcome to 13 Cubed. In this episode, we're going to take a look at what is, in my opinion, a game changer for memory forensics. What is it, you ask? Memproc FS by Ulf Frisk. And just what is Memproc FS? Well, imagine, if you will, a world in which you could mount a memory image and browse the contents of it as if it were a disk image. Crazy, right? There's no file system for memory, so how would that even work? Well, hang on, we'll get to that. First, let's talk about a few of the features this tool provides. Memproc FS is built around analysis of memory from both dump files and live systems with added memory forensics features. You can access memory content and artifacts via files in a mounted virtual file system or via a feature-rich application library to include in your own projects with API support for C, C++, C Sharp, Java, and Python. There's also an extensive wiki available providing excellent documentation, but don't worry because after you watch this video, you'll have all the knowledge you need to get started. So in short, imagine running your favorite volatility plugins, one after another after another, all the while writing the output out to text files, and also along the way, dumping any process memory and files that you find interesting, and then organizing all of that into some kind of virtual hierarchy that would facilitate easy analysis. That's roughly the equivalent of what MemprocFS provides just by running one single command. All right, so now that you know what the tool does, let's see it in action. As you can see, we have our memory dump on the desktop of this Windows 11 box, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, we need to get MemprocFS up and running. So from the GitHub repo, we'll choose the newest release over on the right-hand side. And from the release download page, we're going to be choosing the WinX64 zip file. Next, we need to download the only prerequisite, which is called Dokeny. That's a user mode file system library for Windows. We'll click the newest release there, and then we'll download the X64 MSI. And now we'll proceed to install the file system in user space or use library, which is called Dokeny. I'm going to accept only the defaults here. So just next install and finish. That's it. And then lastly, let's extract the memprocfs zip file. We'll just extract it to downloads and there it is. Let's go ahead and go back up to the root of downloads and cut that and we'll paste it onto the desktop where we'll actually be running it. All right, now let's pop open a command prompt, change into that directory and take a look at what we have. And you will notice that there is a single binary here, memprocfs.exe. That's what we're going to be interacting with. So let's go ahead and run memprocfs.exe without any options to take a look at the available options. And you'll notice there are quite a few. If we scroll up to the top, you will see four examples listed with example number one being probably the most common use case where you specify dash device and then point to the memory dump file. And that's really all there is to it in its simplest use case. I will call out example four here because this shows how you can use it against the live system we're not actually going to be demoing that, but as I mentioned in the intro, it is possible. So all we're going to be using is one additional parameter, but let's go ahead and take a look at the other valid options that we have here, which are listed under valid options. And there are several, including being able to specify the verbosity, being able to specify some various logging options and several other things. But the thing I want to call your attention to is at the very bottom, it's called dash forensic. So what is Dash Forensic? Well, this is really cool because when you use this, it will kick off an extended analysis of the MFT, provide timelines and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. We're actually going to use that with the one parameter, which is called Forensic Mode with in-memory SQLite database. That's probably the most common use case. So to get started with all this, all we need to do is use those two options. So let's clear the screen, run memprocfs.exe dash device, We'll point to the memory dump file on the desktop. Then we'll use dash forensic and then the number one. And that is literally it. That's the entire command. So when we press enter, you'll notice that we do get prompted here for the Microsoft Internet symbol store. We will need to choose the yes prompt there to accept that. Once we choose yes, you'll notice there's not much output, but among what you do see is a mount point, which by default will be M colon. Now, you'll also notice that there is a flashing cursor at the bottom. If you pressed control C and terminated this, then it would kill the mount point, but obviously just leave it open and running. And then we can take a look at what we have. So let's go ahead and pull up this PC. 
I'll actually go ahead and minimize this command prompt here to clear it up a little bit. And as you can see, there's the M drive right there. So cool. What does that mean? Well, let's open it up now that we've mounted the memory, right? And let's see what we have. And I will call your attention to that forensic folder there. Now, because I use the dash forensic option, it is going to take a little bit of time in the background to finish processing all of those files. So we'll actually come back to this towards the end, but just know that it is doing something in the background with regards to looking at the MFT and building those timelines, like I mentioned. You can see some other folders here though, called like PID and name. See, uh, there's also one called registry. There's one below that called sys. So what is all of this stuff, right? Well, that's what we're going to actually be looking at. So let's dig into what I would consider to be the most common things. And we'll probably start actually with sys because sys is a great place to actually look at a process hierarchy, a process listing. So to do that, let's go ahead and go into the sys folder and underneath sys, we'll go into proc. So sys and proc. And then from there, there's actually a proc text file. And if we open it up, that should look pretty familiar to you. It is a process hierarchy. You can see system right there as PID4 with a parent of PID0, which of course is system idle process. There's services.exe and a bunch of SVC host.exe's underneath it as we would expect. And as we continue to scroll down here, yep, this is a complete process listing. Kind of looks like a PS tree output from volatility, right? And again, I'll just go ahead and scroll down to the bottom here so you can see all of this. But this is a great place to start because it gives you a nice lay of the land, if you will. A nice overview of what was on the system at the point at which the memory capture was taken, what was running. All right, check that out, by the way. See that SVC host? Notice that the parent PID there is 4824. And if you look at what PID 4824 is, it's Explorer. And as you know, Explorer should not be the parent process for an SVC host.exe. So keep that in mind because we're actually going to come back to that. That is actually a, well, pretend evil SVC host.exe. So we'll come back to that. All right. So what's next? Well, let's take a look at some other stuff here. What about under sys and then net? And that contains pretty much what you are probably thinking it contains, which is network related information, right? So if we open that text file, that should also look familiar. It looks kind of like a net stat output, or if you're used to volatility, then a net scan output. And you'll see exactly what you expect to see. You can see the PIDs and all that related information, the state, the source and destination IP addresses, process, time, object address, and the full process path over on the far right side. So again, that's network related information. Pretty awesome. What else do we have? Well, next, I want to show you what is probably my favorite thing. This is just awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and click back a few times and get back to the root of the M virtual file system that we have here. And there's a directory I want to show you, which we kind of touched on at the beginning. And that directory is called registry, which contains exactly what you would think it contains. It is a representation of the registry as extracted from the memory. But it gets even cooler than that, because if you start looking at the structure of the registry and, for example, we go under HKLM here, it's going to look very familiar. In fact, it's going to look very much like running regedit on a live system, right? So check this out. This is just awesome. Let's go into system control set 001, which is actually the current control set in use. And then let's go under control and then let's scroll down and find computer name and then computer name. And here we should see a computer name value. And you'll notice there is a text based representation of that and a text file. If we open that, check it out. That is the actual computer name. You're literally looking at the registry value underneath that sub key. How cool is that? So we literally just traverse the registry as if it were a live system and we were using regedit or something like that. But let's look at something else too. It gets even cooler. Let's go under, for example, I don't know, how about the run key, right? So we'll go under software, Microsoft. This is a path you should have memorized. Windows, uh, how about uh, current version? Sound familiar? Run, and yeah, that's the run key. And notice again that we have text-based files representing the values. So if I wanted to look at the value for this, 
Well, there it is. There is the actual path for that VMware tools process in the registry. One other thing to mention is the fact that you can also just go after the registry hives themselves and then analyze them externally. In other words, you don't have to browse the registry in the virtual representation that we were just looking at. You can just go directly after the hive files themselves. Where are they? Well, they're under the registry folder underneath hive underscore files, and there they are. So you can use something like Eric Zimmerman's Registry Explorer, which is tolerant of these slightly corrupt hives since they're coming from a live system out of memory and are likely to be corrupt or at least partially corrupt. You can just grab them and analyze them that way. Pretty cool. All right, next up, let's go back to the root of M and take a look at the name folder. This is going to show us a list of all the PIDs by name with a dash followed by the actual PID. So let's scroll down and take a look at that rogue SVC host process that we mentioned in the very first thing I showed you in that process hierarchy. There it is. And what I want to show you here is that when we open this up, we're actually zooming into the contents of that process. If you look at the very top, you'll see a files folder. And within that, you're going to see a handles folder. And as you would expect, these are the files with which that process was interacting, which is pretty awesome. If we go back up to the root of files, there's also going to be another folder of interest there, and that's going to be modules. These are all the DLLs with which this process was interacting. And also you can see the process binary itself, by the way, notice the icon. Does that look familiar? Yeah, it's actually just sublime text. It's not really malware. It's just a renamed copy of sublime text placed in the root of windows called SVC host, just to make something anomalous in memory that we could look at. So. Pretty cool, there it is. If we go back up, there's also a VADS folder. The virtual address descriptor is how Windows keeps track with what process memory is allocated to a given process. I also wanna point out the mini dump folder. This is pretty cool because it's a win debug compatible copy. It's basically the equivalent of what you would get with a process if you right clicked on it in task manager and created a dump file. So if you looked at, for example, lsas.exe, and then grab the mini dump for that, you can take it into Mimikatz as an example and potentially recover credentials. Next, let's take a look at a folder underneath the process called memmap. Memmap has a file within it called vad.txt, and this is another representation of the virtual address descriptor showing all the process memory allocated by this PID, 8560, with the files referenced on the right side. So just another way to look at that. And then one other thing I'll show you underneath the process before we move over to that forensic folder. And that's actually going to be underneath the modules folder. Underneath modules, you have information about the loaded DLLs. And of course, you can open up any of these folders and zoom into that DLL even further to get such things as the full path of that DLL on disk, as you can see here, and a whole lot of other information that you might get with something like DLL lists from volatility. So another really cool use of that. And there are so many other things here. We're not going to be able to hit everything because we did. This video would go on for like an hour. So in the interest of time, let's go back up to the root and take a look at forensic, which should be done processing by now. This is super, super cool. So because we use the dash forensic flag, we have all of this additional information. Check this out. This is the MFT as extracted from memory. So. In other words, if you use the volatility plugin to parse the MFT, for example, this is the kind of output you might get. And you can clearly see that's exactly what we're looking at here. Just a representation of the MFT from this memory capture. Again, really, really cool. And this was made available to us because we used the dash forensic option when we ran memprocfs. But wait, there's more. Remember the timelining functionality I mentioned? Well, check this out. If we go back up to the root of the forensic folder, there is a timeline folder. And within that, there are some very obviously named text files. If we open this one, for example, this is a process timeline. So here are all of our processes that were in memory and timestamps associated with them. Pretty awesome. Let's take a look at another one. Uh, how about registry? So if we open this file, we actually see registry paths and timestamps associated with them all the way down. And let's just take a look at one more. How about network related information like we looked at earlier? It's right about here. So if we open that, you can see those same network related pieces of information. Only now we have timestamps. These are in UTC, as you can see, by the way. 
awesome. And then within that file, we have the aggregation of all of those individual timelines in one big timeline right there. A memory super timeline, if you will. Pretty incredible. One other thing to mention here under the JSON folder, we actually have what is basically an Elasticsearch compatible uh, import. So you could take this, import it into Elasticsearch and do searches and timelining within Elasticsearch. And of course, I'm sure it would be pretty trivial to put this into any other sim, just convert the data and slice it and dice it as you see fit. How about Find Evil? One last thing to show you here. If we open Find Evil, this is super cool. Remember that SVC host process that was not so legit? Check it out, proc parent, because it has the wrong parent process, not services, but rather explorer. And it got flagged here under findevil.txt. Pretty awesome. And again, that's under forensic find evil. So look, this is just the tip of the iceberg, right? This is just a small sample of all of the wonderful kinds of information that you could get out of this tool. And like I said in the intro, it really is akin to running numerous volatility plugins and volatility exports and organizing all of this data into some sort of format that you could easily browse through and search through. That's effectively what this tool does for you by running one single command. So this is definitely something I'm going to be using in my investigations, and I have a feeling you will too after seeing this. So let me know in the comments below, was this informative? I think this is just absolutely amazing. This is such a cool project, and I hope you found it as useful as I did. Please subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss any upcoming content. There's lots of great stuff in the works. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next 13 Cubed episode.